Here's something fascinating that has been going on behind the scenes at the Marine Corps for the past 25 years that probably none of you know about. As of last year, they're finally replacing the old AAV with a next generation amphibious assault craft, which has some awesome upgraded capabilities. If you ask me, it looks like they basically waterproofed the Army Striker and called it a day. If you think beach landings are obsolete, I have this to say to you, you're obsolete. Places where possible beach landings could happen in the future would be in the South Sea where near piers have been building up. Sure, we haven't had a contested beach landing in half a century, but that doesn't mean it couldn't happen again. But we're wasting billions of dollars on a system that we don't need. To which I say, why are you so cynical about everything? Can't you just let the government blow some money? Have you ever gotten a paycheck on Friday and spent it all by Monday? Yeah, it's the same thing here. Today's amphibious video is sponsored by the free-to-play World of Warships. When I first joined the military, I tried joining the Navy, but they turned me down because when they asked if I had any swimming experience, I told them I grew up with an above-ground pool. But playing World of Warships made me feel like I had actually qualified to be in the Navy after all. It has the perfect balance between action and strategy. You command a massive naval fleet featuring history's most iconic war vessels, including the USS Indianapolis. I know you guys will love this game because it's got the perfect mix of action and military history. You can unlock new ships as you fight your way through the military history of the high seas. For new players who haven't registered yet, use code READY4BATTLE2020 for a bunch of extra benefits including 7 days of premium account time and 2 premium ships like the USS Charleston with Stars and Stripes camo. This month, each week, there is something new to experience because they're always releasing new missions, game updates, and events. Click the link in the description below and download the game now to join me in a nautical themed battle online. Three different companies created a version of the amphibious vehicle. We originally had General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, and Bay Systems in the running, but just last year, Bay Systems won the bid against the others to create 30 of the new amphibious combat vehicles. It will outmatch the old AAV in all the places that matter for a next generation future conflict. It will have a 30 millimeter autocannon on top, which is leagues more powerful than the Mark 19 system. It will carry less troops and move slower in the water. And I know what you're thinking, that that sounds like a disadvantage, but we're gonna go into the recent changes in doctrine, which explain why I believe that's not a bad thing. If you don't agree, there are plenty of articles out there that are critical of the new Super AV, as it's called. What sets the Marine Corps mission apart from the Army is that they have the equipment and training meant for beach landings. The amphibious assault vehicle that Marines currently deploy with has been in use since the 1970s. This new Victor is only now being created after an intense process where in June of 2014, retired Marine infantry officers were actually calling the program out in the Marine Corps Times, saying it was going in the wrong direction by not focusing on speed on water. Not that I put a lot of weight on old retired officers. Can anyone tell me why everything that they say sounds pretentious? You're retired. Go in the den and quietly read a Tom Clancy novel. The response from the Marine Corps to them was predictably dismissive, and I agree with what they said. Speed on water is no longer a valuable metric because the Marines' new doctrine isn't going to rely on deploying from over the horizon, and we'll find out why in a second. Over the horizon is an important term for amphibious assaults. Since the 1980s when everything changed due to anti-ship missiles, which could sink your fleet unless you had all of your Navy vessels at a standoff distance of 100 miles offshore from where you intended to land. So we saw in the 1980s Falcons War between the British and Argentina that the British Navy lost two massive ships to anti-ship missiles that were launched from land. As soon as that happened, the Navy has been experimenting with finding a new AAV, which could move fast enough on water to avoid incoming fire and swim from 100 miles until they hit a roadblock and went back to the drawing board. And we'll find out why in just a second. Real quick, if you wanna show your support for me and the channel, please remember to like this video. I got a lot of the following research information from a study done by the RAND Institute for Congress that helped develop the new AAV. The link is in the description, it's a great read. Back in World War II, our ships could mosey on up within a few miles offshore and drop their connectors there for the beach assault. These new upgraded missile technologies since then have had a huge impact on our ship to shore tactics. The new need to have a standoff of 100 miles offshore 
meant the Marines' old AAV from the 70s didn't have the capabilities to disembark from the ship and swim that two hour long journey to the shore. Some solutions include using a connector vessel to get them halfway there and close enough to go on their own. Leaders started to believe that maybe the days of practical beach landings might be over. Under Secretary of the Navy, Robert Work believed one of the two following scenarios would happen in any future amphibious conflict. Either the Marines would land unopposed, like in Grenada, or they would have to bomb the living heck out of the beach first. Basically, the idea of fighting a contested beach would make no sense in a future conflict. The Navy's thinking here is that if you don't need a fast troop transport if you land uncontested, they're hoping that the F-35 and cruise missiles launched from ships can take out those enemy beach defenses. So now you see why they didn't need an expensive vehicle that's fast on water. Part of the tactics behind these new beach landings would be that the Marines are training to have a doctrine where they don't plan to do a massive beach assault, but instead they would do many beach landings in relatively undefended, uncontested beaches, and then go ashore and conduct operations that would confuse and break up the defending forces. Many people criticize weapons programs because they perceive them as not having every capability that some other system has, but they forget that when you put the new Super AV into the puzzle piece of combined operations, it might not need all those capabilities. It's like having 20 hammers when all you need is one screwdriver and you're forgetting that you have an entire toolbox there. That analogy maybe doesn't make sense, but you get what I'm saying. There's a ton of people out there outraged that the vehicle is just as slow as the last one, but those people don't think as deep as you and me with our Bud Light Platinums and our really nice futons from Ikea. Okay, so the original AAV's performance downrange was kind of a mixed bag. Some Marines say that back then it was effective at adapting to the role of route clearance and it was great at transporting many troops at a time to the objective. I mean, the Marines are famous partly for being able to do a lot with a little. Their impressive performance during that conflict was probably in spite of the AAV instead of thanks to it. During the Battle of Nazaria in 2003, we lost eight AAVs to an ambush to RPG, tank, and mortar fire. The AAV was too slow and outgunned. And that's why the Super AV should fix those problems. The 8x8 wheels are what concern me though because it's supposed to keep its mobility through a sandy, muddy beach environment. I've had enough experience riding in eight-wheeled strikers, an armored vehicle, to know that those things are gonna get stuck even at a hint of sand. Does anyone else wonder if this vehicle will hopefully have some kind of improvement to make it able to handle the beach terrain? If you're on the other side of the boat that thinks that 13 Marines per vehicle isn't enough. Have you ever seen 13 people in full combat kit try to get out of a vehicle? It looks like a damn clown car. I'd rather have a super AV with better armor, better weapons, and be able to drive faster on land if that's really the valuable metric. Or was this a giant waste of taxpayer funds? I haven't paid taxes in years, so I don't really have a horse in this race. The IRS doesn't watch this, right? You also have to understand that the Marines were feeling the pressure of having just done two failed programs to replace the old AAV, which wasted $3.2 billion. But the Marines don't have that luxury. Let's take a quick look at that failed program that was called the Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle. It was going to have the ability to go 30 kilometers per hour on water, and it was going to be able to carry 17 fully equipped Marines. This project was scrapped for being too expensive and unnecessary, even though every military expert on the internet is drooling over it. It was capable of launching from 65 miles offshore, but it didn't take into consideration that all those capabilities were never going to be needed since the Navy believes they won't be ever going onto a contested beach landing like that. Personally, I think Anyone who complains about the new Super AV is too hyper-focused on the specs of the vehicle and not focused enough on the big picture. Please like the video, it helps promote our channel. I'm Chris Cappy, Task and Purpose out.